Yeah, hey folks, well today I'm working on this old uh, Victor Tilter Cut Edger. Um, so basically it's a lawn edger that runs the Victor 160cc mower engine. And the only thing that's really different on the edger engines is they have a heavier flywheel. Fuck off. Um, to compensate for not having a blade disc. So I've been waiting for some parts to turn up. They're all here now. Or to, um, the edger specific parts so I've got a new belt because this one was actually on backwards and it's lived its best life um, I've got the correct blade because this one's just flopping around and I've got the blade cover so all brand new um, then there's also uh, just little bits of cleaning and what have you that need to be done um, haven't run the engine, has good compression. Carburetor obviously needs a rebuild. Filthy. Um, handles need a little bit of tightening up. And the frame could do with a good wash. So I don't know whether I'll pull the engine off yet, but I'll, um, I'll start stripping it down and we'll do the individual parts. So here we're at so far. Um, this is the old belt. Here's the um, incorrect blade that was fitted. Now that's manufactured in March of 2015, so in theory that um, engine hasn't been sitting around for very long. Well, you can tell that they attempted to use this blade, the edge is worn, so maybe four years at most. Um, new belt. So this one's an M26, apparently they came out with M26, M26.5 and M27, um, the 26 being 26 inches long. Um, I just went and looked at my other older one and it uses an M26 so worst case I'll have to get the um, slightly longer one because um, this one's an M27 but you don't know whether they've just grabbed the wrong one off the shelf either anyway we'll find out later um, here's the blade on fitting now you can either get a straight bar blade with a small hole in the middle we can get this one. I like these ones because they cut a nice thick groove down the edges of your path. And there's our new um, blade cover, which local shop doesn't know what they cost, obviously, because they hit me $15.50 for it. And I'm told that's less than cost price. Alright, so yeah, bearings here seem alright. Um, very minimal amount of play in the end here. So, this bit always sort of flops around a bit. That's the back in the adjustment at the other end. So, I'm going to at least take these top covers off and degrease it now. And um, just give everything a really good clean. We've got a lot of dirt build up on top, but a lot of dirt build up in the bottom. Righto. Engine's unbolted. We'll take that, sit it off to the side for a minute. Now we'll take this frame away and start cleaning it up. A little bit of degreaser on there. This is my favourite degreaser. Um, the flaming stuff just doesn't work for me, so it works for others. Go through this stuff like it's going out of fashion. Just every so often it came on special for. Um, $1.50 a can or whatever, and I just buy a whole carton at the same time. Go underneath a little bit as well. Pretty clean underneath for such an old machine. I don't know why there's so much oil and stuff leaked on top when it doesn't appear it's come out of the motor. Could have come out of the carby, so anyway, leave that sit for a little bit. So I'm going to have to clean it a second time. Um, pressure washer didn't quite get off all the greasy crap, so try again in a minute. Let it dry, put some more degreaser on and, and start over. Try and get the original sticker off it too. Six digit phone numbers went away, the, um, went away quite a long time ago now. This is becoming a mission and a half. Um, so your frame, I've had to wash it twice so far and the oil and grease and stuff is so baked on it. There's still some there. I'm not that fussed about that little bit. 
um, it's come up pretty good. So I've just done the first wash on the engine. And you can still see there's this dried on, caked on stuff. It's you know probably 40 odd years worth of stuff baked onto the crankcase. I've had a little peek through the inlet port um, before I've covered it up. And it looks like brand new inside there. I'm gonna pop the exhaust off in a bit. We'll have a quick look at that as well. So here's the um, original Victor electronic ignition module. Quite chunky. Um, they're actually quite notorious for breaking down compared to the newer units that are, you know, half the size. This one's still there. Um, don't know if it works. I assume it will. We'll find out later. Um, the one on the mower I've just done still works fine, but it looks brand new as well. Um, this one, apart from the oil and build-up on it, this engine looks like it's done very little work, so quite happy. Um, just got to get it nice and clean and then reassemble. Unfortunately, I have got to replace the carburetor, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, just the carburetor body, which I'll have in spare parts. Um, there's one of the little uh, pipes for, um, I think it was the decompressor snapped off as I went to pull it. Um, anyhow, it's only plastic and it's very old, so they do good degrade. Right, I'll finish cleaning this. We'll, um, start putting them back together. So I've got the exhaust off here and I'm just trying to, you can see that piston, that skirt, it's got a little bit of black on it but no scoring at all. You can see the rings are sitting proud so they're not stuck in. This engine is like new inside pretty much. Um, while I've got it off, I'll just um, wire brush this exhaust and paint it. Um, probably do it black, like it should have been originally. I might even do it silver, just to be a little bit different. I'll, I'll see what can I find first. Uh, still some of these dirty, greasy stuff here. I might leave that. Oh, I'm a bit done with cleaning for today and you can't see it behind the exhaust anyway. Um, the rest of it's come up very good. All right, so I'll clean this up and we'll be back in a minute. The ring's just had a bit of a wire brush. Um, exhaust is pitted and you can buy them brand new, but for the um, purpose of the exercise, these exhausts do perfectly fine. They're not exactly a quiet machine even with a new exhaust on them, so not like it's gonna shut it up much. I'm just gonna dust it with this silver paint. That'll make it look that little bit tidier. Yeah, that's the first coat done on that side. We'll only do one coat on this side because it's not seen anyway. It's more just to sort of seal it a little bit, protect it something from rust. But the other side, I'll give it two or three coats. We'll tighten these handles up a bit. I don't know why they've worked loose to begin with, but anyway, good as new. Um, I haven't got any black paint to do the handles with at this stage, but if I get over to, um, the shop that has the um, black paint before I sell it, I'll quickly tidy them up. For the time being, I'll just clean them up as good as I can. I suppose you want want some attention as well, do you? Alright, so I'm just going to fit this blade also while I'm waiting for paint to dry. Um, these two washers are concave, so you want them to sort of have the middle part that sticks out facing outwards on both sides, so when it clamps down, they're squeezing flat against the disc. Hello, Emma. Bugger off, Emma. Um, so you've got one washer on, the other one on. We might have to adjust the height up a bit here. So that blade fits much better on there. Then, you want the um, inner part of the washer facing out to the nut. Then you've got this castellated nut. Now, I'm not sure how tight I want this, but I'm just gonna send it in with the um, impact. I'll go a little bit tighter. I'll go to the next hole, so I can put the cotter pin through here. Um, but I'm just gonna go to the next one, I think. 
a little bit more. Tiny bit more. Almost there. There we go. So that's good and tight. Just put our pin through now to um, make sure the nut doesn't come undone. I'm reusing this one, you probably shouldn't. Um, but I haven't got my packet of pins handy at the moment, they're out in the trailer. And that's just not happening right now. So quickly um, move him over. And we'll come back in a minute. I've just got to pull all these nuts out and put the cover on. Alright, so I don't think it really matters what way around you put this on. Um, I'm going to go shinier side out, just so it looks that little bit better. Uh, anyway, chuck that nut on. That bolt didn't want to come out of the housing. Um, this one's been pulled out pretty good, so... I'll just tighten these up come back and hopefully we can put paint on the other side of that exhaust and um, put it back on the engine and then we'll refit the engine in a minute. Now I'll put a little bit more effort into this side. A couple extra coats of paint will smooth it out a little bit. Um, Don't always paint exhausts because they only end up burning off and going rusty again. Doesn't hurt sometimes just put that extra touch on to um, make things look better. There we go. I'll put another two or three coats on that and we'll refit it to the motor. Righto. We've got our frame ready. I've refitted the exhaust. Um, I'll the fuel tank off for now because I'll put that on after I refit the carburetor. It's a matter of getting these bolt holes all enough. Getting these exhaust clips on can be a bit of a pain. Um, I swore at it a lot. I'll just get a couple of these bolts started before I roll it, roll it over. The engine doesn't fall off. No right away wrong doing this. It's just the way I've always done it. So I forgot to show earlier that the pulley for the belt is on a taper. So I had to use a three leg puller to get that off. Um, get on there. Being a pulley, I haven't got it out yet. Um, where is it? There it is. So it does get stuck on there quite well. Same as a uh, mower, has nut side written on the washer. So it goes on there. It doesn't actually get located by any lugs like it would on a mower. And then just drive it home with impact. Moving forward, we'll fit this belt. So, um, to get the um, belt so it'll fit on, I've put a ratchet strap around to the handle, back around to this handle, just to pull the bit of tension against the um, spring. Um, that's mounted the correct way. You get it the wrong way, the blade spins the wrong way and <laughs> pushes the edge back at you. So, now with the correct way the engine's spinning, 
it's driving along and you actually just hold it back while it digs in. Um, also, if it's around the wrong way, I'll show you what happens in a second. The um, flame and belt cuts a groove into the frame of the machine. Like it has done there. So that's what tore apart the old belt, but anyway, too late to worry about now. So, get that out of the way. Now that belt is on there and good and tight. It's got the spring pushing against it. It shouldn't slip. Oh, stand it back up. There you have it. And if you put on the longer belt on the um, machine, it also um, it'll tend to slip if you've got one that's too long in there. So I, I like to try and squ squeeze the shorter one on. You can try and turn it over sweaty. I don't know whether you'll have enough. There we go. I won't start sweaty. We've got to put a few more bits on there. So, next up is this disgusting carburetor. And um, guarantee it's never been cleaned. So we're going to have to replace the carb body. But we want to see what we can salvage out of here anyway. So, um, hose is alright, back cover's alright, hasn't got any cracks that I can see yet, but I haven't cleaned it. It's actually quite clean inside, it's just the outside that's covered in rubbish. Get these diaphragms off can be a bit of a bugger. There goes a small spring, pop it valve, cam power. Cam. Right, that's that side of the housing pulled down. Find the slot for the screw. Here's our jet. Nice and clean, actually. I think if I hadn't broken that thing off, I wouldn't have even needed to clean this car apart from replacing this O ring, which they all need. Oh my god, there's so much crap on here that it's actually stuck. Right, so inside, perfectly clean except for that little bit of crap that just dropped in there. Here's our O-ring, flattened, buggered, rubbish. We don't clean them. Our primer bulb, getting a really good primer bulb is getting quite hard. The newer ones just don't work as well as the old ones. This one's good. Um, and it's also got the float needle there, so we'll keep that somewhere entirely off by itself safe till the rest of it's clean because that is so small you'll just lose it and never find it again right time to wash those and we'll get come back so here's the um one of the models i've got from motherwogger the other week the one i decided to use for spare parts so i borrowed the carburetor off it and kept it complete i'm um, giving a quick check over and it's um just as clean as the other one inside, just giving it a scrub on the outside. So, all I've got to do is put the primer cap from the one we just pulled off the edger on because this one's ruined, and um, with a new o ring, and I think we'll be pretty sweet. I'm just give it a quick wash on the outside, and um, yeah, no, it looks good, no cracks, should be right to go. Um, I had the back cover off and there's it's pretty clean inside there so I'm not going to waste my time pulling it apart. I'm just going to replace that primer cap and fit it up. Now the thing to remember is on the tilter cuts, while they're on a mower like that, they're on that side of the um, machine so they're actually upside down so you just put the um, float cap on the other way up. Alright, alright, so we've got our O-ring. Um, where do I put that screwdriver? There it is. Uh, I'll see a jet light. That one's actually a little bit gummed up. Um, not to worry. We'll use the other one because it was nice and clean except the end of it. Yep. Ah. Oh, some stale petrol. About it though. It's 
bit of quick suss out. Looks like we might even be in trouble with this one, so we might have to go back to the drawing board. Oh no, okay, it's okay. Just looked like the thread was chewed out of it, but looks like it should be alright. Just in there. Okay. Um, so why on earth has this got crap wrapped around it then? God, it will only know. Right, and blow air through it, it'll be right. Alright, so that's already got the float needle in it. Um, pointed side up, obviously. Get our new O ring here. It's looking suspiciously like an old used o-ring but i did just pull it out of the new packet so mm -hmm. unless i've been stupid and put something away used each wouldn't be the first time all right so we'll just put it on upside down so it doesn't lose our float and it's the right way up for the machine anyway so where's our jet You me, you little bugger. Just got to get it started. All right, we'll get this fitted to the machine in a second and we'll go from there. All right, so getting these um, throttle cables back into the carb can be a bit of a um, dark art. Because you sort of want to, you have the throttle cam inside all the way at the stop position. You just got to snap it in and hope it grabs. And at the same time, get the throttle it's a little bit tricky to even try and that's gone straight in. Up into um, away from the start position. And that way it won't pop back out. Now you don't want to move the throttle back to the stop position again until you put in the kill switch wires which stop the um, throttle cable popping back out of the can. So I just need to put a little bit of lube on this tube. It's gone a bit hard and um, get it refitted on there. I need a slick little sucker. There we go. Right, so go and get our kill switch wires and um, we'll be back in a second. Okay, so we've got our new kill switch boot. It goes on the longer one and it's got, you can tell this one is a longer one and it's got a um, sort of a shallower patch in it where the um, middle rubber sits which is this one here um, sometimes they're a bit hit and miss especially the center rubbers the ones you get on eBay um, nothing beats the original genuine but anyway so you've got the throttle away from the stop position so I always put it about halfway First thing you want to do, is you can see, there's a little hole through the side where the um, cross wire goes through, so these aren't hard to get right, but they can be a bit fiddly at the best of times. You just work it in until, of course this one doesn't want to cooperate, but since we're recording. <laughs> Use it in there. We might pause this in a second, though, so I can swear at it. Oh, one more try. No, that's all right. We'll be back in a minute. So once you're done swearing at the um, ignition kill wires, it goes on. Basically, tip the carb down and it'll locate like an old style light globe. So, where's our location pins? Sorry, because this carb's upside down now, it tilts up. On the mowers you tilt them down. Push it on. 
then you are securely now attached onto the machine. Right, I'll be back in a moment and we'll show you fitting up the governor. Alright, so I forgot earlier I have to had to um, flip this little end cap upright. So this um, goes into the diaphragm area of the car. So the way the governor works on this is pretty simple. Faster the engine spins, the fan pulls a vacuum on this little port here and it goes into the diaphragm here. So when you're on, say, run, when it's reaching the engine speed of, um, I think it's 3,600 RPM, it pulls a vacuum that will pull the um, throttle valve close enough that it only runs at that speed and doesn't run away. Um, if you've got air leaks, obviously they'll over rev. If you get an air leak around that diaphragm when you click that cover on and off, it can give make it over rev. All in all, a very simple setup and it works. Right. A lot of people don't like the old style plastic, oh, the newer style plastic carbs, but they've used them since the 70s, so they can't have been that bad, to be honest. Or well, right up until the two stroke was axed off. Now, just gonna go and get our fuel tank, chuck it on, we'll put some fuel in it, see what happens. All right. Doesn't look quite as neat as on a mower when the um, fuel tank's the other way on those, but I must have worked. They sold quite a few of them. Not every household had one of these because they were quite expensive as compared to some of the other stuff you could buy. Alright. Home of the truth, I'll go and I'll grab this fuel can. Um, Put some fuel in it. Oh, the tank's dry, have a look, Lexi. Oh, it's got oil in the bottom of it, but that's about all it's got. Oh, I bet it smells really, really, really yucky. Oh, yeah, that's awful. If it smells yuck, then why did you smell it? Oh, something to do. Some people do it for a little bit, don't That's more than enough. Now we find all the fuel leaks that I've left behind. <laughs> oh, there shouldn't be too many. One thing I like to check for, and I've just cleaned out a carb, and I'm just putting fuel in it for the first time. I need to press the primer a few times. You can actually hear the needle in the seat clicking if you, there's not too much ambient noise, which there is a bit at the moment. As long as we've got fuel flow down the engine, which we don't, because the oil will have dried in the fuel filter. So I'll just quickly do, I'll turn the fuel tap on, we might actually get some fuel low. There we go, we'll let that little bit of garbage flow through. That was a bit of a stuff up on my behalf. Hear the noise I'm after. All right, let's go out here. How many pulls do you reckon? Um, four. Do you reckon it will even go? Yeah. What, what makes it so certain? Because you told me. All if right. I'm right, you owe me five bucks. I don't owe you nothing. I haven't got five bucks. Oh, we five. Hang on. Two. Three. Four. Well, I guess I don't have my five bucks. Oh, quiet again. A little quiet adjustment thingy here needs some, um, needs some TLC. There we go, that might hold it better. Oh, these are bastard. Oh, that's a bastard. Oh, that's a bastard. Oh, that's a
stop. As you can see, um, with a more experienced operator, they are capable of doing quite a decent garden edge. And also more ground is wet as at the moment. We've got about 25 mils of rain the other night. Um, and it's only been cold. Uh, the engine's running quite well. Um, they are a little bit hard to start than a mower, I've found. That's mainly due to the case that you're pulling the starter rope out from the side and you've got nothing to really get hold of and also when you do pull it it hasn't got the um, sort of the kinetic energy from the weight of the blade disc and blades throwing the engine over that little bit more once it is turning so anyhow very clean machine now um, runs well and uh, ready for another round thanks for watching